Let's start with our old mate Fiona Patton. And I've made it all very clear where I've been on this person for a while. She was you know, fun to have on the show for a little while. And then, of course, she uh, jumps off the deep end. Taxpayers' funds uh, more than anywhere else in the country to go to political parties. Uh, Daniel Andrews, when it looked like she was tipped out of the parliament, was going to try and find her a job. Now she's a reliable vote to get to his agenda through. So what she just puts out as an idea. Normally, uh, as crossbenchers would know, sometimes these things are press, are press releases that go nowhere, but in Victoria, she's quite a reliable vote. So does this flow back through, uh, through the Victorian government? And, Stephen, how do you feel about this? Laws well, I, that would specifically make it a penalty to go after women and transgender people on the internet. My simple point is, if you want to propose uh, laws to say it's wrong to vilify any person on the internet, to abuse any person on the internet, that's fine. How do we get into a scenario where, frankly, uh, you know, online abuse deserves to be punished differently depending on which gender it is, uh, it's directed to? Look, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Paul. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. I, I'm for a greater degree of uh, exposure and punishment for the trolls in general. I mean, there are plenty of young kids, males, boys who get bullied online and unfortunately take their own lives. Right. Uh, so I don't think you can possibly, with credibility, move a bill that says this gender or, or the trans community, they've got special protections, but young boys who are being bullied uh, don't. I, I think this is an absolute epic fail by Fiona and she should rethink it and come back with a bill that has a general protection for people from being attacked by trolls online. So, so do you think that there are enough sensible people in the Victorian government to say no to this because of all of the things that you've just said? Or is, I mean, you know, it's a pretty woke place. Uh, she's, she's, she's ticking all the buttons, uh, all, 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 all the big issues, and you want her to remain a reliable vote. I mean, we've seen in New South Wales the tag wag wags the dog on the decriminalisation of abortion debate. Um, you know, I, I'm a great proponent of the crossbench, but I'm not a great proponent of the crossbench when it's going to be illogical stuff like this that a government will roll along with because, oh, it gives us a chance to do something that, well, we wouldn't have otherwise come up with through our own caucus. Yeah, look, I, I, I have some sympathy with your argument there, Paul, but I, I was in the Senate for 20 plus years, and I've watched individuals uh, twist uh, their own ideas and take advantage of being a minority of one or two to leverage for... Sometimes Brian Harradine was considered the master of this. He got Tasmania much greater uh, money out of a federal government because he had the balance of power. I've watched Pauline Hanson use her balance of power to put forward things I think have been completely crazy, but the government have wanted to appease and get Pauline's vote. And the Andrews government uh, is very conscious of Fiona Patton and her position to pass legislation or to sink legislation. Uh, it's always better to try and reach, in my view, an agreement between the major parties so that you don't have to listen to the barking mad uh, people on the cross benches. And there are some very sensible people who come onto the cross cross benches at times. Thank you, I've Stephen. had a very good relationship <laughs> with Rex. I, I, I oh, look at I've this worked closely fist. with Rex <laughs> look at this in, uh, in the past. <laughs> I, I never had the pleasure of dealing with Pauline uh, in the Senate. I didn't agree with much of what she said when she was in the reps, but I left the Parliament not long after <laughs> she joined the Senate. So I couldn't say that I've I've worked with Pauline <laughs> seeking her vote. Except but you've seen times you when you governments take on crazy Paul. ideas, all the rest of it here. No, no, I understand, but I'm just saying, you've got more mates in Victorian Labor than I do. Feel free to pick up the phone and say, hey, this one, don't touch it, all right? They're going to listen to uh, you rather than me on the telly. Pauline... My, my friends in the Victorian Labor Party would know exactly where I stood on some of these issues already. Well, feel free to just use what power you can, my friend, because this is a level of crazy we don't need. Pauline, there's a lot in all of that, Rex, as well, about, uh, about cross benches and the rest of it, but let's just get back to the actual issue uh, that, that Fiona Patton's trying to put in yep. place. Um, Pauline, how do you feel about a law that offers protection for one gender over the other on anything? I think it's ridiculous. And, I, and I'll go back to what I said 23 years ago, Stephen, what I said then, I've always <laughs> been saying since, equality for everyone. Now, you can't argue with that, that it's stupid comments that I'm making. And what she's saying, Fiona is an absolute 
hypocrite. Here she is, she came out just after the election and she ridiculed me strongly in her language uh, about me and yet she's saying that ridicule usually happens about women who are, who are in the political, not in the political field, but um, uh, well-known female and identities in Australia, and yet she has actually come out and said it against me. I don't... Look, this is just ridiculous, and, Paul, I am so sick and tired of targeting this about, you know, if you say anything to do it, we've got laws in place, racial vilification laws, Section 18C, that we can actually um, go out and lay charges against someone. Uh, you know, it's so over the top. Australians are sick and tired of hearing this about transgender, about women only. What about the men out there? Why aren't we actually doing something more for men? Because the most downpressed person in this country is the white male, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sick of hearing about poor women, poor transgender, poor whoever you are, LGBTIQ+, plus and all the rest of it. So, anyway, I, it's just ridiculous. And, you know, this Fiona, she wants to have a go at women and transgender on the, on the internet if you have a go at them, but she doesn't want a, a list of the pedophiles' names to be exposed. So she's quite happy for those people to, to go to prison, having a go at women and transgender for six months, but we shouldn't put out a list of people who are pedophiles in this country. Excellent. I've got no time for her, I think... I think she's ridiculous. No, excellent point. Rex, uh, Rex, again, I just don't think that we should have... I'm not pretending there's not a problem, but I just think the idea of a, 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 a legislated standard that's different between genders is pretty weird. Well, actually, uh, Paul, we have different legislative standards for children and adults. So children are afforded better protections uh, properly uh, for uh, uh, you know, things like grooming on, on the internet, uh, for uh, child sexual offences. Uh, we also have different laws in respect of uh, disabled people. Uh, I think if you have a vulnerability, uh, it is responsible for parliaments to deal with those vulnerabilities using, uh, using laws if necessary. Necessary. So uh, this may open up a conversation. Uh, if if the, indeed there is an imbalance and people are being abused, I, I don't want to see any uh, females abused on on. Neither do I. And I don't want to see any uh, LGBTQI or, or transgender people um, uh, abused online. But in the same way that you said kids, we don't have a law that is that was slanted on because more girls get abused than boys. It's all kids are treated the same way. The idea that, oh, men can't get this protection until they're equal, uh, they're equal the number of victims. I don't understand how the standard can't be applied to all. Well, you're just drawing arbitrary lines. I mean, you can say between adults, teenagers and children, uh, or indeed you can say between gender. Uh, we, ha we have laws uh, or policies in this country that seek to... Uh, deal with gender imbalances on uh, on boards, for example, on government boards. Mm. So laws are used to alter conduct, and if we need to alter conduct uh, to protect vulnerable vulnerable people, then let's have that conversation. 